Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the little hairs on our tomatoes, what exactly they are, what the purpose is, as well as what those little white bumps are and the difference between all of that and regular roots. So I wanna preface this video by saying, I want to just knock, I'm just attacking this with vengeance. I want to get rid of the idea that the hairs turn into roots and I want to be the voice of reason behind that conversation so please share this video I did an entire blog post always citing the research and the papers that I looked at for this and I just want you guys to share it because I want the word to get out that hairs do not equal roots so these little tiny hairs that we see on the outsides of our tomatoes are actually called trichomes now I looked at a study on trichomes particular to tomatoes. And I found one really interesting one done in 2020, where they looked at both the non-glandular and the glandular versions of trichomes, just to determine what the purpose of each one served. Now, they already knew that trichomes weren't roots. This is literally just a garden myth that's persistent. It's not a scientific community debate. It's just a fact that the trichomes are glandular and non-glandular. So the study looked at the density of the trichomes, how many there were, and where they were positioned on the plant, and how those trichomes or density thereof based on species would then react to different stressors. So one of the really interesting, there's quite a few interesting ones that came out of this, but the first one being that between the non-glandular and the glandular trichomes, there are eight different types. And so there's four different types of glandular and four different types of non-glandular. Now the non-glandular ones are actually the ones that we see kind of on the leaves and they become more predominant so that the tomato plant gets older. Whereas the glandular ones are actually kind of these ones that we see here. And you actually as a garden scientist can see these visually with your eyes. So glandular trichomes are really long and cylindrical and they look really, really hairy. Whereas the non-glandular ones are short and stubby and they are a little bit firmer, I find, but for the most part, that's what you see on these leaves. They're just short stubs. So the really long ones are the glandulars and the short stubby ones are the non-glandulars. The glandulars are what really scents and oils, all of which can help with various different things from pest resistance or deterrence to herbivory uh, deterrence, as well as the non-glandular can help with um, changes in heat as well as herbivory as well, because it gives kind of a little bit of a tougher leaf or a less than ideal texture of leaf to consume. So I just put this poor plant through an enormous amount of stress. I'm gonna have to choose a different candidate for outdoor uh, planting for the experiment because there's gonna be some major transplant shock for this guy. But I ran him under the tap and I got rid of all of the dirt. So I'm gonna try to do some close-ups on this. My camera's not the best at close-ups, but one thing you can note is there is hairs in between the adventitious roots, also known as a root of primordia. So the little pimples or lumps that you can get on tomato plant stems are roots. And they actually come out from the perikinum cells um, in particular. These are undifferentiated cells, meaning they don't yet have a job or a role. And they're being assigned that role based on environmental factors. So higher levels of humidity, um, darkness, that sort of thing. And in the case of where this plant was planted, I did plant him a little deeper um, during his transplant. And with that, we ended up with some uh, roots of primordia showing up and um, yeah, so eventually they turn into a regular fibrous root system, but they tend to not drill down deep like the primary root system does. So the primary root system is this bulk down here, and those do not come from perikinum cells, just the adventitious ones do. So adventitious roots are the roots that become what for the reason why we plant our plants deeper now i was doing some research separately on just that and i'm going to do a separate video on whether or not you should even plant your tomatoes deep i know that sounds like a really weird conversation uh, because it's something that i do religiously turns out there may be some debate as to whether or not that's a good idea but nonetheless that's what we're looking at there so advantageous roots are different than primary root systems primary root systems dig down deep for water and nutrients uh, roots of primordia or advantageous roots just kind of branch 
it from the stem to help with support and um, some nutrient capture some water capture but they're not going to dig like the typical taproot system we do see on a tomato and they are not hairs they are completely separate they come from a completely separate area on the plant itself and the adventitious roots and the perikine cells are plumbed directly into the xylem and phloem of the plant itself so i want to thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button comment down below if you knew the difference between the three anatomical features of a tomato um check out the article i wrote it goes into much more depth as to what the heck's going on here and of course share this video because i want to this out of the park i don't want to i don't want i don't want anyone to talking about hairs and tomatoes being roots any longer. I'm done with it. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.